everyone, it's Natalie. Yes, I'm not in my polka dotted apron for this video. That's in the wash. Got all messed up for Thanksgiving, <laughs> right? But I'm here today to show you how to make turkey bone broth. Don't throw your turkey carcasses away. Make some bone broth. You can also do this out of chicken bones. You can also do it out of pork bones. You can also do this out of steak bones, uh, beef bones, I mean, like rib bones and all that stuff. You can also just go to the store and buy bones. Go to the butcher, ask them for bones. Make yourself pork bone broth, beef bone broth, chicken bone broth, and turkey bone broth. But we're going to do turkey today because I have a 19-pound turkey. Yes, 19 pounds my husband got for just the two of us. It's really pretty simple to make bone broth. You need two days, though. Unless you got a small chicken, you can do it in the Instapot. Or I could do mine in my big old pressure cooker in a couple hours. But I prefer to do a two-day method. I like that slow roasted flavor it gives me. So... 48 hours to three days. It depends. You got to cook it till your bones are smooshy. Okay? And I'll show you how to do that. Stay tuned. left of my 19 pound turkey and actually I gave my dad a lot of this turkey so I got some bones missing but it's gonna work it's gonna be fine so yeah a lot of turkey left so I'll be back when I got this carcass picked clean not clean but I'll show you how much I pick it okay I'm doing my bone broth in an oster roaster one of those big long roasters right you can bake in that you can do like a crock pot thing you can use a crock pot but I don't have one big enough to fit this turkey in so I'm using a roaster but it works the same in a crock pot you do it on high okay but this is what I got in here there's my uh most of the turkey right here, right? Sorry, I'm holding this. Most of the turkey right here. I also have the wings in here, all the skin. I have only the rosemary and thyme that I had inside my turkey. Do not put sage in here. When you cook sage for a long time, it becomes bitter. Okay? We're going to add other stuff. And I'm also, this is what I got left of the turkey in the bowl. I'm also going to scrape all this congealed fat and little turkey bits in here after I give some of these to my puppy. <laughs> right? She loves this stuff. But I liked, you don't have to add the skin. I add it for flavor. Okay? Remember, we're I'm keto, so fat's good for me. So if you're not keto or you're watching fat... And you're watching this video go ahead don't put the skin in there but I would suggest still doing it you can always skim off the fat later okay but I'll show you what to do next after I wash okay so now that you got your turkey in whatever cooker you're gonna use I do not suggest a stove because remember we're doing this until it's soft and that can take a couple days I've never done it on the stove, but you could try boiling it and see how that works. But your bones got to be very, very soft, okay? So this is part one because, you know, two days later I'll show you the end result. So I'm going to do a part one, part two. This is part one. Got the turkey carcass in, turkey carcass in here. No sage. I got some cooked herbs in here. That's only because they were inside the turkey, besides the sage. I removed it. Hold on. That sneeze. Oh. <laughs> okay. So we got that in there. And now we're going to add some celery. You know, we're cooking this for days. Don't be pretty with it. I'm just going to chop chunks. I want the leaves in there, too. I actually grow my own, but that dried out. Too old now because of the frost. 
So I bought some. Just, you know, a head of celery. I'm just rough chopping. I'm doing the whole thing in there. Because I am keto. And keto carrots are a no-no. Okay, carrots have a lot of carbs. But if you're not keto and you want to make this, you can definitely put a ton of carrots in there too if you want. Or if you're keto and you don't care about the carbs from the carrots, put them in there. I'm actually going to save this part, plant it. I'm going to put it in some water till the roots start growing. And then I'm going to plant it in the ground and it will grow. Did you know that? You can regrow your celery. See that? I'm going to take a little more off. But yeah, you can grow your celery. Save that bottom. Put it in water. Just cover in the bottom here. Till roots start growing out, plant that in the ground. You got celery. My mom did it. And it worked. So I'm going to do it. She actually did it in my garden. So you don't have to put that much celery, but because I'm not keto, I want a lot of flavor. I mean, because I'm keto, I want a lot of flavor and I'm not adding carrots. Add that in there, not cooked, just roughly chopped. And now I got my onions from the garden. Regular onions, whatever you want to use, yellow, white, walla walla, doesn't matter. I just took the loose papery skin off. This is cooking for days, right? I'm not even gonna remove the rest of the skin off. I'm just cutting these, mine are small. Whoop, mine are small, I'm just putting them in there. You can quarter them if you want. But I'm just making sure they got a little bit of loose skin here. Just getting that outer skin off so there's no dirt. Actually, that's fine. Let me throw that in there. I'm putting about, these are small. See these? These are small. So I'm putting, what did I do? I just did two. So I'm putting five. Put as much as you want or as least as you want. I want a lot of flavor. And my onions, because they're small, and I grew them myself, they're very, very pungent. Okay, so I suggest a pungent onion like a yellow. These are yellow. All right, baby. Yeah, okay. Just getting some loose paper off of it. Okay. One more in here. Now garlic. Gotta have garlic. Okay, I've just got some loose cloves here. I'm just giving them a smoosh. I want to put a bunch. Okay. I'm not removing the paper. I don't care about the paper. We're going to strain that out later. Okay. I'm just taking that loose paper off here. loose stuff, okay? I'm getting it to where I can break these all apart. You don't have to smush them. You can just toss them in. In fact, that's what I'm going to do for time. I'm going to put about 10 to 12 cloves in here. I like garlic. These are going to melt down in there. Okay. Let me. That's pretty much that whole head of garlic I put in there. It was the whole head of garlic. Okay, I'll show you what to put in it. Not put fresh herbs in here. You can do that later after it's done, but don't do it now. Why? It'll be bitter. It'll be bitter, okay? And sage is just bitter when you cook it for a long time. But all fresh herbs will become bitter after they cook for a long time. So I'm taking a huge heat. I'm going to put like two of these heaping tablespoons of salt in here, okay? Flavor 
We're building flavor. Okay, next I'm putting around a tablespoon. You can adjust it to your needs of whole peppercorns. Okay. And then I got dried bay leaves. I have fresh ones. They're growing out in my garden. Something scared me over there. My cookie sheet fell. Jeez, today. Anyways, dry. Not fresh. Dry. I'm putting, for this big thing, I'm going to put three bay leaves in here. That one was really small. Okay. Three bay leaves. And then I like a little Italian flair on here and it doesn't have any sage in here. I got dried Italian seasoning. I'm gonna put about two teaspoons worth in there. Don't go heavy on your herbs. You don't want it to get bitter, okay? Even dried ones will bitter up if you put too much. And then, shoot! Do that later. Then apple cider vinegar with the mother in here. And I don't really measure this, just put a few gloves in there. Around a quarter to a half cup. I just kind of put it in there. This is gonna help soften the bones, okay? Because we're gonna cook this till your bones squish. All right? And that's pretty much it. Oh, no, parsley. Dried parsley. Okay, it's my own. But any old dried parsley. Just give it a little freshness in there. Just about a tablespoons worth. And then now we're gonna cover this with water. You wanna cover everything with water. Just cover it. Okay? I'm gonna start getting water in here and I'll come back. Like I said, I have a roaster oven here. I'm gonna plug that baby in. Okay. And I'm gonna set that to 350 right here. And you see, I have it just covered with water. If I push that turkey down, the water goes over it. Okay. It's gonna make a ton of broth, but we're gonna reduce this down. I'll show you later. You gotta stay tuned for part two, but that's how you get this baby going. Key is, cook this to where you can take tongs and squish the turkey bone, like the turkey leg or the wing or the thigh bone, and it smushes. It's all soft, very soft, okay? So I'll be back with another video when we're at that point. Stay tuned. Make you some turkey bone broth. This goes the same with all bone broths. You can use all the ingredients I just used for your chicken, your beef, and your pork too, okay? Or whatever combo you want to use, but do not put sage, okay? Do not. They told me that a long time ago. And I'm like, what? Nah. I need sage in my turkey broth. Believe me, it was bitter as hell. Do not do it. Oh, hair. Okay. Don't put hair in there either. <laughs> You're going to cover this. And mine got bent somehow. Huh. Anyways, cover it. And just keep checking on it. If your fluid gets down too low, add more water. Okay. It, it doesn't matter if it goes below the bones, but, you know, if you're getting to where you barely have any broth in here, you need to add more water. If it gets halfway down your carcass, add more water. There we go. All right. I'll see you in two days. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I bring a lot of keto recipes here and, you know... Some of them can be non-keto, that you don't have to be keto to eat turkey broth. Make you some turkey bone broth. Bone broth is so good for you. It heals your body. You know, cold and flu season's coming, and we got this COVID thing going around. You need to use some bone broth. Boost your immune system.
cook it today. All right. See you in a couple days. Bye. Oh, oh, oh.